Welcome to the program today. Manu Gonzalez here in studio with a very special guest and friend, L.A. Marzulli, and we are going to be talking about a what I think is one of the most uh, exciting topics I know that I've been interested in, and that is crop circles. And you might think you understand crop circles, but we're going to get to the bottom of it in a way that you might not realize. But before we do, I want to remind everybody, uh, Gary and I are having a great time with our new podcast, and we're just trying to let everybody know about it, theweekinbibleprophecy.com where we discuss uh, daily topics. And as you can see, there is a lot to talk about prophetically. And as we know, 2023 is already ramping up to be an amazing year. But behind the scenes, let's, let's get back to the topic at hand. Welcome, L.A. It's great to be here, Mondo. Thank you. And, uh, you know, behind the scenes, we see that the enemy is working. He's laying out his cards. And this has been going on for a while. But we're going to talk about crop circles, which I started seeing in the 1990s. Uh, which is really when they started getting their heyday. But let's start at the beginning here. You imagine somebody sitting out there, it's like, well, I've heard of crop circles. Um, first of all, what is a crop circle? Well, a crop circle is a glyph or a, a geometric pattern or design in a field of wheat, rapeseed. It can be a lot of different crops. Uh, the one behind this is in a field of corn, which is about eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that in a little bit, I'm sure. But it's um, some of the earlier ones are just circles. But some of those circles already had anomalies in them, which those who study this realize that, wait a minute, this is a real one as opposed to someone hoaxing it. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you bring up hoax because I remember in the 90s, there was a lot of work that was done on these just from a secular perspective. And so we're trying to bring the spiritual perspective. But back then, as it always is, it's almost like this false flag operation where what, what I have here is, come on, Ellie, here you travel all the world. You're wasting your time. This is Doug and Dave. <laughs> They've been out there with their boards, and there's a picture of videos of them right. out with ropes and boards, and they're pushing the corn down or the wheat down, and they're making these things. I mean, this is just man-made. I mean, why is that just ludicrous? <laughs> Not that there aren't hoaxes, hoaxes. There are hoaxes, yeah. There are always hoaxes in order to, to, to bring the scent off the trail, the red herring kind of, right. you know, argument. Exactly, sure. And what's interesting is, you can't do that in a, in a field of corn that's eight feet tall. So you can have all the stock stompers, as it were, and you can be out there. You can do it with wheat or rapeseed or, or, or crops that grow fairly close to the ground. But corn that's eight feet tall, you can. And that's why we feature this crop circle. We'll get into that because that basically blows the lid off of this thing. So the real ones, many of them, the crop is interwoven. So in other words, like braided almost, right? It's basically like braided. So when you're in the field, you're looking at this and, it, and it's laid down intricately, absolutely in, with, with great care. And uh, as we talked about earlier with Gary, the, the, when, when you crush, um, when you take your stock stomper and you're in a field of wheat, let's say, and you're, it down, and you're yeah. forcing it mm -hmm. down, you're breaking the stems. That's not what we see here. It's the stems are bent. Some force of nature, many people think it's microwave energy mm -hmm. because the nodes of the plant seem to explode mm -hmm. from that. So it's hard to say exactly how they're made, although people have seen orbs, balls of light dancing above the field. And as they're moving around that field, a crop circle appears right underneath them. We're looking at technology that we don't have today. I mean, there's no way. So the real ones, there's a couple of signs that you can see. The, the seeds will germinate much, much quicker, and the plants will grow taller and more vigorous than uh, the, the seeds ones. outside the circle, taken from the same field, taken from the same field. So where the crop circle is, those seeds germinate much faster, they grow more robustly, versus the seeds from the same field that are not part of the crop circle, which don't do that. So that's one scientific um, check mark, you can say. The other one, of course, the nodes are, are blown out from a great source of heat, that the crop is, is bent, it's not broken, especially in a field of corn that's eight feet tall. And, and you know, the, the, corn, the corn stalks can be like two inches in diameter, I mean, at the base. So how is that done? So we've got the weaving, um, the fact that they're not broken, that they're bent, we've got the nodes, I mean, all these, and people have studied this, the germination of the seeds. People have done scientific, scientific research on it. And so this is why we know that, okay, some of it is Doug and Dave out there with their, you know, stock stompers, but a lot of them, certainly the one behind us, has so, nothing to do with that. So, you know, uh, one of the things that struck me, uh, 
is, there, I want to add a couple other elements of complexity, is number one, you have the complexity, it's not just a circle. Okay, and so we'll talk about that and we'll be having some images up. But the other thing, because people can manipulate video, we, you know, sure. and so, I, you know, in, we just know if somebody brings a video, whether it's Bigfoot or whatever, you're like, okay, Photoshop, whatever. So we, we, from scientific, we can dismiss those in one sense, like how do we know it's reliable? We can't vet it. But the other thing that is unmistakable though, is that you have the complexity of the geometric shapes, but right. secondly, the time factor. Many times there'd be uh, legitimate, you know, officers or constables, especially in the UK, they'd be there and then they would see something, nothing would be there. And then like within the morning or a few hours, boom, there's something there. That to me is compelling evidence that it's not just Doug and Dave out there doing this in the middle of the night or whatever, because it takes so much time. So let's talk about the complexity and the time factor. Well, you're looking at geometric, geometric patterns. You're also looking at angles. You're also looking at some of the crop circles when seen from the air are 3D. They're 3D, so how the heck do you make that happen? So we're looking at something that's absolutely astounding, and it's appearing in the fields, not only, a lot of it's in the UK, but some of it's over here, mm -hmm. and in different, different countries. Mm -hmm. And they appear, many of them appear around ancient megalithic sites. There seems to be a convergence between what happened in antiquity and what is happening in modernity. And it's all, in my opinion, is a signature, the same guy. These are the fingerprints of the supernatural, the fingerprints of the dragon, i.e. Satan. Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders. It was a film a few years ago called Signs about crop circles. Mm -hmm. We have a biblical overview of the phenomenon based on the biblical prophetic narrative. What this is, we tie back into the signs and wonders that Paul warns us about will happen in the last days. You know, we're going to continue to talk about just the, the essence of what it means to believe the Bible and that the Bible speaks about the supernatural world and how it interacts with ours and in its existence. Uh, but before we do, I want to give you an opportunity to see how to get our magazine where, again, our magazine is dedicated to highlighting so much of the supernatural nature of the Bible, uh, the topics, the things that we're seeing, the prophetic elements that are coming upon our world very quickly. Everything that we're doing at Prophecy Watchers is vital because Bible prophecy is coming to pass right before our eyes. And it has never been more important for believers to understand what the Bible says about the days that we are living in. In case you haven't noticed, the whole world is spinning out of control, but we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran, China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. The Prophecy Watcher magazine features articles from leading prophecy experts like Gary Stearman, Mondo Gonzalez, Thomas Ice, Randall Price, L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, and many others. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs that feature in-depth teaching on the ancient book of Enoch, heaven and the new Jerusalem, the biblical case for the rapture, a look at how God put the gospel in the stars, what really happened at the Tower of Babel, and Ezekiel's prophecy on the battle of Gog and Magog, this special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Well, welcome back and I hope you again get our magazine, LA Writes for Our Magazine. And what we were doing is we're talking about 
the fact that the Bible speaks about the supernatural. We've done a lot on just the supernatural. Oftentimes in the church, the church ignores that even though they believe in the resurrection. But they don't allow the other elements of the scripture about this unseen world and how it influences ours. So we're coming back. Let, let's summarize kind of where we've been. Um, we're talking about these, these crop circles. And crop circles is an unfortunate word because it's, it's geometric elements yeah. that are sophisticated. Very sophisticated. And I mean, so let's, let's, let's go back to Doug, Doug and Dave for a moment. <laughs> Doug and Dave is out in the field. They're with their stompers. And, and let's talk about the nature of they're having to calculate. And when they have done it, as you mentioned, they're out there with their naturally their strings and everything else. But yet m- many of these are done so fast with no evidence of anybody. There's just, it's impossible for them to have done it with that level of sophistication. And we talk about this in the film. We sat down with Hugh Newman and Francisco, Francisco Carrera. Um, Hugh Newman is, has written, he's an author, researcher. He appears a lot on ancient aliens. Francisco Carrera is the head of exopolitics Portugal. So we're at the Crop Circle Museum in the UK, which it is- was stunning, which that's is, a cool. That museum is amazing. And we want to thank the, uh, the, the, the owners for allowing us to film there, which was just a great honor. But you know, Hugh Newman talks about the idea that this is advanced geometry, not in the beginning. In the beginning, they were circles. I get that. But very quickly, they progressed. And pretty soon, you're looking at really advanced geometry. And I believe that, that exposing the secret language of the dragon, that mathematics is the secret language of the dragon. He uses this. This is his signature. And he mimics God, because God does it all the exactly, time. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And so, these, some of these circles are incredibly complex, incredibly complex. And they are, what, what happens is, is it, it's deception. It lures people in. And, and of course, it's promulgating the idea that we're being visited by extraterrestrials. So, so let's, let's, let's jump in right there. So the, we're coming from a biblical perspective. Right. The people in the UK, they're all over. They're at these megalithic sites, these other sites. What is the typical New Age thought on the crop circles? What are Space they thinking? Space Brothers. Space Brothers. Yeah, but the New Age people, with all due respect to them, and remember, we need to pray for these people, men and women, because they're, they're biting into the apple. They're, they're being deceived, mm-hmm. just like Eve was. Remember, let no one deceive you. Jesus warns us of this. Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders, you know, that the deception is so powerful that even the elect would be deceived if that were possible, God has raised up certain people, watchmen, mm-hmm. like this show that we're on, like myself. We're out there going, wait a minute. These are not extraterrestrials from uh, Epsilon Eridani, as, as, <laughs> as, as, yeah, as Gary <laughs> Stearman likes to say. Mm-hmm. But these are, in fact, um, fallen angels. These are interdimensional entities. These are fallen angels that Satan comes to, to deceive us. Let no one deceive you. And Jesus warns us of that. Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders. This is a sign and it's a lying wonders. These are not space brothers. These are interdimensional entities. And the end game is to lure people away Mm -hmm. from the truth. What is the truth? The truth is the biblical narrative, what we see in the pages of our Bible. If you take the supernatural out of the Bible, what are you left with? Some genealogy, that's about it. And some battle scenes. It's so imperative for the church to grasp hold that we are in the last days. These are the end times. The, the dragon is ramping up with this whole campaign. And it's not only, we talked about last time I was here, the abduction phenomenon, mm-hmm. which is absolutely real. But now the crop circle phenomena, it all dovetails together. It's all sourced from the same guy, Satan, i.e. the dragon. So uh, one of the things that you bring up in the film, which is great is, and they do at the, at, and they bring it up at the museum, Talk a little bit about the history of crop circles. Well, it goes back into the, the first crop circle that appeared in the UK is called the Mowing Devil. At least recorded. That, that, that we know about. Correct, right. yep. There, may have, there probably were others. Yep. And you know what's really interesting about this? You could you travel down to Peru, like the Nazca lines and things, mm-hmm. and you kind of scratch your head and you're kind of going like, wait a minute here. What, it's different. It's not crop circles, but they're glyphs in the earth. Mm-hmm. Nazca and crop circles, there's, there's something going on here. It's the same guy. These are not extraterrestrials. These are not our space brothers. These are the fallen ones who can manipulate space, time, matter, and energy and create these glyphs 
these lines that we see, because just like the crop circles, you can only see them from the air. So you can hop in a, a small, you know, twin engine plane or single engine, whatever. Helicopters even better, because you can hover over these, these glyphs and you can see them for yourself. But that's thousands of years ago. Jump forward to modernity, where we've got these complex crop circles. Lucy Pringle running around in a, in a um, ultralight or a small plane or even a helicopter. And she's photographing all these, thank God she did because now we've got a record. And the Crop Circle in the UK, the Crop Circle Museum in the UK is astounding because they've got this whole progression of the circles and how they progress and the complexity. And they talk about Doug and Dave and the you know, stalk stompers and the hoaxes, but they also talk about the scientific evidence which we covered, which differentiates the fake ones from the real ones. Yeah, it's always, it's, it's amazing how, uh, again, if you're, if you're doing a, a, a an operation, a war operation, you're always looking to distract and deceive. So you put a few hoaxers out there and then it gets in people's mind like, oh yeah, they already proved that this was a hoax. Wrong. I mean, if that's the extent of somebody's research, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other scientific complexities. Um, mi microwave, you mentioned that, but radiation, EMF. I mean, what, what, what other things that have they been seeing on these? Well, again, there's these balls of light that appear over the field in almost instantaneous. It was a video. We showed the video yeah. in the film. So something's going on. The balls of light are circling the field or directly underneath them. Images, circles, or you know, complex geometric forms are, are, are forming. You know, you talk about Doug and Dave. So they, they're, you know, they're in a field of wheat. Let's say it's up to their waist or knees or whatever. And they've got their stock stompers out there. They've got tape measures. They're putting a stake in the ground. Okay, Doug, go over 50 feet. It takes time. Feet. It takes days it to takes, do these. Yeah. Well, not, it, it, you can do some of the simpler ones in no, a I'm day. No, I'm talking the complexity. But this thing yeah. is a whole different deal. What, what makes it amazing, uh, you know, when you, get it, when you get in the air above these things and you're looking down, who is the prince of the power of the air? Yeah. Why is it that going into the mounds here, maybe we'll do a little bit of a segue, but when you look at the Serpent Mound, I was there for the first time right after I had been to Peru. So it's around 2013. I wasn't impressed at all. I didn't know what I was looking at. So I'm walking next to the Serpent Mound in Ohio. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I, I hop up on the two and a half story tower and I'm looking. I could see the snake and its mouth is open in the act of swallowing an egg. And it was Gary Stearman who talked about Genesis 315. It's all about the seed, which illuminated all of us there. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's a seed war. And I, I can't stress that enough. Genesis 3.15, hats off to elder brother Gary. He was the one that exposed and, and illuminated, dare I use that word, that passage to us all, that, that it's an ongoing seed war. So when you look at the serpent mound, that snake, that serpent coiled in the, uh, in, on, in the wilds of, of Ohio, its mouth is open, it's in the act of trying to swallow the egg, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But when you're there, you really don't grasp it. It's only when we flew the drone a couple of hundred feet up, all of a sudden that glyph, the largest earthwork, in my opinion, on the planet, showing the serpent effigy in the act of swallowing an egg. It's not giving birth to the egg, as the New Agers say, with all due respect. Uh -huh. It's trying to swallow that egg. Why? Genesis 3.15. The seed, the offspring of the woman, will, the offspring of the dragon, will be at enmity at war yes. with the seed, the offspring of the woman. He, the one coming from the woman, will crush the dragon's head. It sets up the rest of the biblical narrative. If we don't get Genesis 3.15, we don't understand what's going on in modernity. It's a seed war as we talked about in number four in the series on the abduction phenomena, which is absolutely real. It's gut-wrenching to watch number four in our series. And the reason why the Lord, look, there's a fire in my belly. We're going we're gonna to have all seven um, offerings in this, it's seven DVDs in this film series by the end of the year. That's a promise because we feel just pressed to get this information out, to show Christians what's going on, to arm you with the tools that you need to talk to your grandson or, or, your, or your children about what's going on here. Because Ancient Aliens does it every single Friday night. This is the alternative to Ancient Aliens. You'll never see it on the History Channel, but you'll see it right here on Prophecy Watchers. Yeah, so, so come and uh, give us some background. So here you are at a Mounds conference. What happens? Give us the, give us the background of, of what happened there and why it, it, you, it, it comes to be so important. We're at the first Nephilim Mounds Conference, it's 2012. Gary Stearman, Russ Dizdar, L.A. Marzulli. Where at? In Newark, Ohio. Okay. There's something called the Hopewell Road, which connects Newark, Ohio to Chillicothe. 
It's apparently a straight road. Some people believe in it, others don't, no matter. <clears throat> Chillicothe, it's in a straight line. <clears throat> so we got word, excuse me, we got word from the powers that be, from friends of ours, that there was this very large crop circle that appeared overnight in a field in Chillicothe. Overnight. Overnight in a field of corn that was standing eight feet tall. What's amazing about it, this crop circle appeared either the day before, the day of, or the day after the first Nephilim Mounds Conference. The Nephilim Mounds Conference, for the first time in history, in the history of the world, in the history of America, tore the covers off what these ancient megalithic sites, these mounds all over the United States, we gave a Christian perspective. Of course, the modern day archeologists don't like our perspective that's and fine. that's fine. They're entitled to their opinion, but we're entitled to ours. And we believe that this is Nephilim architecture, fallen angel technology. And this is why our On the Trail film series is so important. <clears throat> There's a convergence that we see here. And we're, as far as I know, we're really the first people to ever do it. These crop circles that appear, in, this crop circle that appeared in Chillicothe, okay? in a field of corn that's eight feet tall, is directly um, by a river. Across that river is the Chillicothe Mound Works, thousands and thousands of years old. There's a convergence between the two. It's made by the same entity, in our opinion. This is the finger, fingerprints. This is the evidence of the dragon manifesting in modernity right next to these ancient megalithic sites. But not only here in the United States, the same thing happening in the UK, the same exact thing. Silbury Hill, which looks very much like the mounds that we have here, like Graves Creek Mound, like the Seat Mound, huge mound, and, but it's in the UK and it's thousands of years old. Right next to it is this huge crop circle and they appear in the megalithic sites. There's a connectivity. There's a convergence. This is the fingerprints of the prince of the power of the air. This is his signature, which is deception, to lure people away from the biblical narrative. And that's why we're making these films, to show what's going on and give an answer from a biblical paradigm, from a biblical worldview. Amen. Well, you're going to see right now an opportunity how you can get L.A.'s film. We're living in the era of drones as well, which you, you can't uh, appreciate uh, this topic without having drone capability, and so you've done very well in this, so take a listen. L.A. Marzulli's passion for biblical truth has taken him on archaeological adventures all around the world. He believes that we'll soon see full government disclosure surrounding the exploding UFO phenomenon, perhaps as a way to explain away the rapture of the church. And when it comes to the sixth chapter of Genesis, a study on the hybrid giants of the Bible, L.A. is one of the world's leading experts on the subject. His latest film, Crop Circles, Exposing the Secret Language of the Dragon, is his fifth film in his UFO disclosure series. There's nothing more bizarre than these complicated designs that appear overnight in highly charged demonic locations like Stonehenge in England or the Serpent Mount in Ohio. No one really has a logical explanation. It's supernatural. You're going to learn about these mysterious images on LA's new film and hear from the experts. The images in the wheat fields may be aliens, complicated mathematical formulas, serpents, astronomical secrets, precise architectural drawings, and peculiar messages of peace to mankind. Satan's army of fallen angels seems to be entertaining us just beyond the veil. LA's new film is available for your gift of $25 or more, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. Just call the toll-free number you see on your screen, or visit us online at prophecywatchers.tv. If you want to avail yourself of all five of LA's groundbreaking films in the UFO Disclosure series, including the new Crop Circles film, we have a special offer today. 
we're making all five films available for your gift of $100 or more, and we're adding four fascinating bonus DVDs to the TV offer. Bonus number one, the Supernatural Book DVD set includes three hours of amazing research featuring Gary, Mondo, and L.A. discussing the UFO phenomenon, the Nephilim, the Seed of the Serpent, and the supernatural side of scripture. Bonus number two is the Mysteries of the Red Planet DVD, an hour-long study on the planet Mars. Was there an angelic civilization on Mars in the ancient past? Did Mars experience a nuclear catastrophe at one time? Gary Stearman and Doug Woodward will fill you in on all the details surrounding the war planet. Simply ask for the Mars Dooley Disclosure Package and we'll get all five DVDs plus the four bonus DVDs heading your way. The Bible tells us that one day Satan will appear with miraculous signs and lying wonders, but you have nothing to fear if you know Jesus. The rapture of the church may be the most supernatural event in the whole Bible. So we'll see you here, there, or in the air. Well, welcome back. And to me, this particular topic is extremely fascinating. I've been watching it for 25 years. and. And so to see you come along and go on location to these places is tremendous. One of the things that I liked about the film was Arecibo is this uh, radio telescope that was down in Puerto Rico. It's been destroyed now or it's been damaged. But it was part of the SETI movement, the Search for Extraterrestrial Institute. And so they're, they're sending signals out, these radio signals out to, with information yep. about us, our humanity, numbers, yep. etc., yep. looking at a response. So they send this out, very sophisticated, very specific, and then all of a sudden later, a glyph appears, you know, a crop circle appears with information. What's the connection? Well, the connection is this, that the answer to that was by a radio telescope in the UK. In the UK. It's called the Chilbolton Crop Circle, which is this long um, answer, basically, with uh, three-strand DNA other than two, and very, very interesting. It's obviously not a hoax, people it's a warning that deception is all around us this stuff is manifesting and as christians we need to stand up and go wait not so fast citizen we're looking at phenomena but what's the source of the phenomena are these space brothers from zeta reticuli or are they in fact the denizens of the dark side i.e the dragon we believe of course it's the latter the whole idea is to deceive 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 watch the film you will not be deceived Man, L.A., appreciate your time. Thank you, Mondo. And for those watching, again, we love to address topics like this because as we look and we see the supernatural nature of the Bible, it reminds us of the supernatural nature of God and that He's created us and that sin is real. And we have a responsibility to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as the only way of salvation because uh, there's an appointment. Paul said in Acts 17, there's a, there's a day coming when God is going to judge the world uh, through the person of Jesus Christ. And so if you have not put your faith and trust in Him, allow this very interesting topic to guide you to the reality of Scripture. The Scripture tells us about the supernatural world. And as we see these things happen out there, as L.A. mentioned, don't fall into deception. So we appreciate you watching this week, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.